Hello, welcome to Create Full Art. I'm Ashley Krieger and today I would love to show you this bird and flower painting inspired by the artist Victor Delphine, who is a famous artist in Peru. I highly suggest that you check out his sculptures, brassworks, and his paintings. I'm so grateful for his inspiration and excited to share it with you today. So let's begin relaxing while we learn about art and get creative. We just need a few simple supplies to get started. Please notice that there are some optional supplies. If you have them, great. If you don't, we can still do this painting together. The colors that we use are listed in the description and you can also get an art lesson plan that goes along with this tutorial. Once you have all your supplies, we're ready to begin. For the first step, we're gonna paint the background using this tan color and your one inch wash brush. This is a really easy step. All you need to do is get this color all over the canvas. This canvas will be this one solid color and then we need to let that dry before we go on to the next step. I'm gonna add some texture to my painting. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but I'm going to use an optional stencil to create my texture using my stencil brush. This is a bristle brush right here with the flat top. That's a stencil brush. I'm using my transparent orange paint. And so it's not going to be that much of a difference between the tan color and this orange color. So if you do wanna use a stencil, just use whatever you have. If you don't have one, then just skip this step. It's so subtle in the background that it doesn't really have to be there. So I'm using the yellow now, the transparent paint, as a glaze so that I can soften the shapes in the background, but I can still see them. Let this dry and then we can go on to the next step. Again, this is an optional step. This one is sketch your outline of the birds, flower, and the vase. I didn't have to sketch my outline because I was painting this as I was going. But I have my painting to share with you as a traceable to make it easier for you. So if you want to use the traceable to help you paint along, go ahead and do that. It will make this painting much easier and faster. So if you're using the traceable, then all you do is need the optional supplies of the transfer paper or using your watercolor pencil to help you trace. This is included in the art lesson plan that goes along with this lesson. In this step, we're going to paint the vase with the detail brush, outline the shape of the vase at the bottom center of your canvas. This is another excellent time to be creative and shape your vase how you wish. You can also use the reference photo to help you, or if you've already traced it, of course, you're just basically filling in this shape with designs. So I'm going to outline mine with brown, and you can choose whatever color you want. When you're happy with your vase, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. Now we're gonna paint the stems, leaves, and flowers using your round number six to eight brush, whatever you have, and your green color. We're gonna paint several stems and leaves. We're gonna use the tip of the brush to get the tip of the leaves, and we're going to push on the brush to get a nice thick area for the leaves. If you use the traceable to help you sketch the leaves and the stems and flowers and everything onto your canvas, you're basically just filling them in. So this is a really easy step for you. If you didn't do the sketch, um, then all you do is really just place leaves randomly all over your canvas. Or you can use my reference photo to help you place the leaves or even look at Victor Delphine's work and see where he placed his leaves. So now I'm gonna work on the stems. So I added a little bit of black to my brush and I'll get a darker stem or a darker green. I'm using the tip of my brush to get my line. So all of my leaves stems need to either meet a line or go into my vase. Some of the lines will be free for a little while until I put a flower on the end of them. Now I'm gonna start painting my flowers. I can choose whatever colors I wish. I'm gonna start with this magenta color for this flower over here. And I'm going in little circles just to get um, little petals. So I loved how Victor in his work had just different looking petals for every one of his flowers. So I'm gonna do that in my own painting. I can also start adding some detail onto my flowers. 
just know that if you do add detail, it's much easier to add that detail on your dry paint. And for detail work, you can use your tip of the brush, which is what I did for these lines. Or you can go to your detail brush if you want to get even a smaller line or you're having difficulties making a line with just the tip of your brush. And you can also get out your acrylic pens if you have those, the fine tip pens, and you can use that to create lines. So it just depends on what you have available and what's working for you. I want you to feel free to be creative in this step and make your flowers and your leaves look the way that you want them to. So you can add detail to them if you wish. You don't have to add that much detail. If you want this to be a quicker painting, your flowers can look all completely different from each other or you can have some matching. Now this is a great time to also get creative, adding lines to your flowers or dots in the middle, whatever you want to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and because this is an optional step, and it's a time to be creative and not copy every brush stroke. Move on to the next step. And if you need to pause your video to finish up your flowers and make them however you wish, go ahead and do so. And then let's continue on with the next part of this painting. So in this step, we're gonna paint the birds and the details on those birds. If you use the template, your birds are already down onto this painting. Because I am creating the template right now that you got to enjoy, I have to go ahead and sketch my birds. I wanted to share this with you because there are parts of the birds that go over the flowers and behind the flowers and that was a key thing with Victor Delphin's work. So basically I'm just drawing the shape of the bird. I'm going to put a beak on the very end here and then an eye in the middle and I'm choosing where I want my shapes to overlap. One of the key things is that every bird is different. So all of the birds have a different tail end and they have a different wing. And they're not realistic. They're very much um, geometrically shaped. I recommend using a reference photo. My reference photo is available for you if you didn't use the traceable. I also recommend instead of using the paint pen like I'm using, Use your watercolor pencil so you can easily erase any lines that you need to fix or you don't want to keep. So now I'm going to start filling in the color of my bird inspired by Victor Delphin's work. The important thing is that these colors are solid colors. That means they're opaque colors. A lot of his birds were all blue, but some of them were multiple colors. And so I added purple to this one and red in the middle and then blue as the wings. But most of the other birds, I'm just going to fill in with blue. And then I added some texture to them. So I used the small flat brush to create some lines in the tail. Notice how they're very geometric and flat looking. Because we're just filling in our birds, with a solid color, I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the next part of painting our birds. You can go ahead and pause the video if you need to before we move on. Now I can start getting creative with the heads of my birds and every one of Victor's heads of the birds are different in his painting. And I really enjoyed that. I actually really liked the swirl eyes that he put in and the patterns in the heads. I liked how some of them were white and the beaks were different colors. I liked how each bird, even though they are similar in colors, they were all quite different. It made it very interesting to look at. So as I go to each bird and I start putting in the shapes, I'm going to be thinking of how I can make them all very unique from each other. I'm also going to use some similar patterns that he used. So wavy lines, some triangles in there, maybe some irregular shapes instead of just all geometric shapes going to fill in some of my heads with white completely and then other ones I'll have some blue in there. The heads can be different colors. The eyes can be different shapes from each other. You can use dots, dashes, different types of lines, geometric shapes, irregular shapes, whatever you feel like doing. Just be creative. Go from each bird and just fill it in however you wish. You can get inspired by my painting or Victor Delphine's paintings other artists or do your own thing. So in this last step, we're going to work on our finishing touches and personal preferences. And this always includes creativity and it's my favorite part about painting. This is the time to add in whatever you feel like. Take away the reference photo and then fix whatever you want as well. 
I love this step because this is when your painting starts looking complete and then you just have to fix it or change some things and be happy with it and then you're done. The other thing is that no two paintings will match perfectly. I can't even match this painting myself if I painted it again because I'll be in a different mood, I'll have different preferences, and the amount of times that we do something over and over again or the experience that we have doing something, that influences our artwork. So since we've painted this, we've learned how to paint in this style and experimented with it, we'll both be better at it next time. And then of course the more we get creative and we veer off of the reference photo or a reference that inspired us to paint this, that's when it will be more towards our own style versus what we're seeing. And all of these things combined will make our paintings unique. If you would like to become a better artist and discover your unique art style, you can go ahead and become a Grateful Art member and get my weekly art lessons. They will help you with that. As a member, you get access to the full tutorials, the reference photos to help you paint along. And then if you are a VIP member, you get the weekly art lesson plans and they include the templates and color help and more instruction for you. You can also get the art lesson plans on my website, createflart.com, and choose specific ones that you would like. Thank you so much for showing up today, for relaxing, taking some time for yourself. I feel very honored to have you here with me, and I hope that you learned a lot. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for your support. I am so happy to share with you these tutorials and art lessons, and I'm excited to show you the next week's painting and tutorial inspired by Peru. So stay tuned and I'll see you in my next video.